I'm working now on his dark jacket, roughing that in, again keeping it loose, just getting the general areas of more shadowed or a little bit more highlighted. And again, with especially with the acrylics, I'll be I'll be layering, I'll be coming back over again the next round. Um, this is just, but I do want to, you know, when I put down, I want it to be in the ballpark of starting to establish the lights and the darks that create the shape, the molding, lighting on the jacket, just as on his face and other features. And as I start getting the, the jacket, the, the mostly dark areas of the jacket done around his face, hands, um, it starts giving definition to them because they start suddenly popping out against that dark. I was getting a little off camera there, I didn't realize it, so let's just, I'll just show you a little bit as I work where you can see it a little better on the pants, adding some shadow to, to mold the shape, coming up around from underneath. Before I quit for today, I want to just rough in a little bit around the edges of how he's going to sit against the backgrounds. And I'll be doing a lot more on those, and of course, just the whole area. So this is more just to get a, a sense of it for my own sake, just to kind of let it sit overnight. So I'm going to start in on the painting again. I'm James at the beach. I'm going to scan over just to show you. I've actually got a class here today. Several, several people who are some of my regulars for my Wednesday afternoon open studio class. And they may be asking some questions along the way. So this is where I left off yesterday. And yesterday I was working mostly on James. I was working mostly with a, whatever it is, a half inch brush this one. A little bit smaller brush, but for the background stuff I'm going to use something bigger. Actually I'm going to use this really big splayed out old brush. It isn't good for much else. Just to quickly get in my general colors of the sand and the wall and that background whatever it is. Um, another wall maybe. So I've got my usual palette of colors. And first let's slop it over to that on here, that sand looks pure white, but it seems more natural to me for it not to be quite so white. And maybe the sun was just blasting it out so much, it probably looks a little bit whiter on that photo than it really was. So I'm going to give it just a tiny bit of uh, sand color. Um, and that way I can, I can do a little bit of highlighting of, you know, where the sun might be hitting it strong, just to give a little bit of shape to it. So right now I'm just going to... And keeping it fairly liquid, you know, kind of uh, not running, but because I, I know I'm going to be coming back over and doing another layer and adding a little more texture and things to the sand, to all the parts of this. So I'm not going to bother doing it real heavily yet. But see, you can see, I mean, I'm just, it uses up paint like crazy. So you basically, you just have to mix up a big pile of it when you're doing something this. But I want to get it all painted in because it will give me a better sense of how the whole thing is working together. But to have it more finished edge to edge. The other thing that's kind of weird about acrylics is that it, it gets a little more transparent as it dries. So as this dries, that orange is going to show through what I'm putting on a little more than it does now. And it's just the nature of the, of the acrylic paint that does that. Sometimes it irritates because you think you have something thoroughly covered and then it dries and it's, ah, I can see back through it. I don't want that. Um, but other times it's kind of neat to knowing that you get a little bit of show through, that can actually work for you. Carl, what 
red was that that you're using? Uh, I'm just using a little bit of cadmium red and uh, cadmium yellow. I mean, it's, 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 I'm adding so little color to this white that it hardly even matters. You know, it's just a tiny bit of tint, so just a little bit of, of all three primary colors, uh, but a little bit less of the, the blue, so it ends up adding just a tiny touch of kind of a sandy color. It's not much, though. I just don't want it pure white at this stage. So I've got that, and while I'm while I've got that almost white mixed up, I'll like extend the top of that wall back there is almost as bright. A little bit more of that tin in it. So the same colors, just a little bit more. Tone it down. Once I have this roughed in, then I'll go back and and do some more fine tuning on, on the figure of James. I want to get back to that. That's the most, certainly the most important part of the picture to get more accurate. But I just want to be able to see what the rest is going to look like before I go back to working on him. And like this, I'll definitely get work later on getting a lot of that neat texture in that in the concrete of that wall, because I like that texture. I just don't want to fiddle around with that too much yet. And now that uh, darker brown. Or... Now that brown, because I don't use any brown paint, it's going to be the yellow, yellow, red, and blue together, but leaning a little bit toward the red and the yellow. And that's just a matter, I've just got to mix it up. See, now I'm trying to match what I put down yesterday, but I need to make sure I stay a little lighter because of that thing in the acrylics drying darker. So I'm not quite there, but it's got to go on a little bit lighter than yesterday's, or it'll end up drying a little bit darker than yesterday's. And even though at this stage, now in close to them, it is a little darker from the shadow, so some, somewhat darker is okay. And I can also work in to the area I put down yesterday so that, and this is just a guess that it'll dry pretty close, but it doesn't have to be exact. But. You can see that from yesterday had a little bit more of a greenish tint too. So let me add a little bit more. Blue to it. See now it's got more of that slightly greenish tint like yesterday's instead of more purplish. More of that. And see, this is fun thrashing around with a big brush instead of all the real fine little. Things. It'd be really fun when I go at it with a palette knife later on. Who knows, maybe a sponge, I don't know, whatever, whatever it takes. All right, so here's where we are now, since the last time I was had the camera on. And uh, I've got everything blocked in, not finished, but blocked in. Now I'm going to zoom in closer because I'm going to work more on James himself for a while and start tightening up the details a little bit on him. So, I mean, I, I have this face kind of roughed in, but, but it's, not, it's not really carefully done yet. So let me go, first I'm going to go in and shape the sunglasses a little, a little more carefully. And I'm not using pure black on the sunglasses, because if, if you look closely here, they're not really quite pure black. They're like dark brown. I mean, they're picking up, I'm, I'm sure they're supposed to be black sunglasses, but there's so much light in a scene like this that even black things, except in the deep shadows, aren't going to be real black. And I do want to make sure that I can use pure black, like in a few of the shadow areas, to really give it a little bit more starkness. And I can't, if I make too many things pure black, then I can't make the important things pure black and set them off. So. I notice you're using a flat brush. Yep, yeah, I'm using the same flat 
flat brush that I use for everything, you know, so I can, so I've got the, you know, the broad flat, I've got the corners. Yeah, I rarely use anything but a flat brush. It's just because I can do pretty much just about everything I want to do with a flat brush. Different sizes, depending on how much control I want or how big an area I want to be able to cover. But Softness around the hairline. It doesn't look like he has a plastic wig on. I always thought it was so unfair that Barbie dolls had real hair, but Ken dolls just had plastic head, plastic hair. What they do that for? <laughs> never. You never thought of that? No. The Ken dolls had just painted plastic hair. I was thinking they had like fuzz, but maybe that was G.I. Joe. I'm trying to think. G.I. Joe had painted plastic hair too, I think. Yeah, we had we had a, a G.I. Joe that we had used. <laughs> <laughs> with three boys, I mean, you know, it's like, how many ways can you think of to, to blow up or otherwise demolish the guy go? Because he was tough, you know, he'd take a lot. Now, some highlight on his nose. Because there's some pretty bright sun working on him, so we've got to make sure we've got... It's funny. As I was working this, I, I realized I've never studied anyone else's feet this closely before. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's <really> weird. Bottoms. <laughs> yeah, the bottoms of somebody's feet. I mean, I'm used to painting faces and hands, but the soles of somebody's feet. You know? <laughs> but in this case, they become important. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. it'll be important that those feet look really the way feet ought to because they're kind of a a pretty central part of what makes the painting work, you know. It's, it helps get that laid back. I mean, anytime you can see the soles of somebody's feet, they're relaxed, you know. It's, yes. 